Okay, so one of the requests I get most often is to do a Vim tutorial for basic users, for beginners who have never used Vim. They've heard about it, they know stuff about it, maybe they know it's out there, maybe they've been told to fear it or told that it's hard to exit or something like this. Uh, an instructional for someone like that who wants to learn Vim. Now, every time I get a request like that, I've pretty much always said the same thing, and that is open up a terminal and open Vim Tutor. And Vim Tutor is exactly what it sounds like. It is a tutorial for Vim. It is a Vim-based playground for you to learn Vim in it. Uh, it's fantastic. It's where I learn Vim. It's where many other people learn Vim. Um, now, maybe that's not enough for you. So in this video, I am going to reach you halfway. Uh, this is going to be a, it sounds silly, but a Vim Tutor Tutor, or a Vim Tutor commentary, I should say. In this video, I'm going to go through, it might be a series of videos, depending on how long it is, but I'm going to go through Vim Tutor myself. I'm going to do all the commands, learn all the basics, and I'm going to give you all of the extras, because Vim Tutor is fantastic, it tells you all the stuff you need to know to basically use Vim, um, but there's a lot of stuff it doesn't tell you. There's a lot of stuff it doesn't go into. So this video you can watch while doing Vim Tutor yourself and pause it when you need to. I'm going to be going through all the basics. I'm just going to be sort of breezing through it, so feel free to keep it open and pause it when you need to. Um, now, to open Vim Tutor, uh, all you need is to have Vim installed, open up a terminal, and run Vim Tutor. Easiest thing in the world. Now, the one thing about Vim you need to know that we might as well explain at the very beginning beginning is Vim is what's called a modal editor. Now, most text editors, when you get into them and start uh, typing keys, you expect it to modify it's like to actually type those keys. Um, and the thing that confuses uh, people who use Vim for the first time is that when you just start typing keys in Vim, it doesn't do what you expect it to do. And that's because Vim is a modal editor. Now, let's explain what that means. Vim has two main modes. There are many other modes, but two main ones. There's what's called insert mode. And insert mode is when you are actually typing what keys you press. Insert mode is normally how you actually type your document. That's, you know, if you open up Notepad on Microsoft or in Windows, Notepad is sort of like always in insert mode, right? So Vim has that, of course, uh, you have in certain mode, but you have another thing called normal mode, which is the, nor the default position in Vim. And it's really what you spend a lot of your time in when you're actually using Vim. And normal mode is, of course, uh, it, you could really rename it shortcut mode. The way to think of normal mode is every key, all of those keys, all your QWERTY keys are different shortcuts that mean something. And knowing Vim is knowing those shortcuts. That's really all you need to know conceptually about Vim. But let's go ahead and get into it. Now, once you open Vim Tutor, you'll start here. Um, you shouldn't be using your mouse and you shouldn't be using your arrow keys. But uh, you learn your very first key here, and that is J. Um, press the key J, or the J key, enough times to move the cursor so that Lesson 1.1 con completely fills the screen. So I am going to press J a whole bunch of times to scroll down painstakingly one, one line at a time. Uh, and now we're at Lesson 1.1, okay? Uh, moving the cursor. Now, uh, Vim is known for H, J, K, and L, which are keys right on your home row, right? H, J, K, L. Now, H, J, K, L are the arrow keys in Vim. Uh, so, you know, J, of course, is down, K is up, uh, L is right, and H is left. And that's, a, of course, going to be a little counterintuitive if you've never used something like that. Uh, I mean, you might be familiar with WAST or something like that, but H, J, K, L is Vim's uh, way of doing directions. Um, and it's a great way of keeping your fingers not just on the keyboard rather than having to go to your track point or mouse or something like that. It's a great way of keeping your your fingers exactly in between uh, at the home row where they need to be and where they need to be to press other stuff. So it makes for getting things done pretty quickly. Now, so we'll play around. You can play around with H, J, and K, and L. Now let's go down to the next lesson. So this is how to exit Vim, because this is the thing that confuses people and they're all a bunch of memes about you not being able to exit Vim when really it's lesson 1.2. So 
Uh, it's the easiest thing in the world to do. Now, exiting Vim, they tell you to use colon, Q, exclamation point, and enter. That's a lot of typing, it might seem. Now what you're doing here is when you press colon, you're going into a kind of command mode when you can type a command down here and run it. Now Q is actually just an abbreviation of quit. And if you run quit, it's going to quit. If you run Q, it's going to quit. Now the exclamation point, I should say, if I scroll back here, um, the exclamation point is basically like no confirm. So if you have made changes to a document um, and you just type in Q, if you run the command Q, it's going to say, do you want to save your you know, changes? If you run, uh, run Q with exclamation point, that just assumes you're not going to save your changes. That's what that means. Now, I think that colon Q, exclamation point, enter, that is too much typing for me. So I'll go ahead and tell you um, one nice way, the way that I usually quit Vim is, um, I'm actually going to turn on scroll lock for people, uh, capital Z, capital Q. And when you do that, you just automatically leave Vim. So capital Z, capital Q. That does basically the same thing. Okay, so let's go back down here. Um, now, exiting Vim, we know how to exit Vim. Um, capital, actually, I should probably say it since I just used it. Um, you can use Control U and Control D to move up half page at move, move up or down half page at a time. Now U is for up and D is for down, of course. So Control U, Control D. These are general Vim shortcuts. I use them a good bit, so since I'm using them, I might as well tell you they're not actually included in Vim Tutor, despite the fact that they're pretty useful. Uh, and let's talk about something else. I don't think that Vim Tutor talks about because these are easy to remember. Um, if you type capital L. Uh, this will send you to the bottom of the page. So capital L sends you to the bottom, the low portion. H, capital H for high, sends you to the high portion of a screen. And capital M will send you to the middle. So you can use something like control U and control D, and then use M and L and H to get, ever, get wherever you want on a screen or something like that. Um, so those are easy to remember. Again, control U, control D, they're just up and down. And H, M, and L, they're just high, middle, and low. Very easy to remember. Um, and I'll give you one more one uh, that isn't, doesn't have a mnemonic with it. But one more thing to remember is if you're on this line and you want it to be centered, you can just type uh, ZZ, lower, lowercase z, lowercase z. And that'll get you on whatever line you need to be, you, your cursor is on. Okay, so lesson 1.3, uh, uh, editing text in a very basic way. Um, so this is going to give you deletion. So you learn that uh, Z, or excuse me, X is the character for just your typical deletion of a character. Um, and it tells you to go move the cursor to the line below marked with the arrow. So we're going to move it down here. Um, and then you can go over to the superfluous characters and delete them with uh, X. So I'm going to delete those. The cow is over the moon. Okay, very simple. Um, so now that we have that, that's simple enough. That's how to delete one character. Now, of course, in Vim, if you want to delete a whole word, you're not going to type, you know, XXXX. That's not how it's going to be. But we'll talk about that later on when Vim Tutor gets to it. So that's how to delete characters. To insert characters, you can use I. Um, now, I, what it, we talked about normal mode and insert mode before. Now, what I is, is basically go into insert mode. So if I go down here, and I go right here where there's some missing uh, text, or actually, I guess there's some missing here, and I type I, now, hypothetically, if I type in HJKL, it's going to actually type them. This is insert mode. So I'm going to delete those. I'm going to type in the desired text, so sum. And when you're done making your modifications in insert mode, adding text, you press escape. Um, now, I will say that escape is a little far away uh, from you know everything else. It used to be escape keys were actually closer down here, so they were easier to touch. I recommend everyone to remap their caps lock to escape. That's what I have. That's what I use. It's much easier. Some people re remap control. Um, now, I believe you can also use, what is it, uh, control L? Maybe not. Uh, what is it, control? Someone will say in the comments what it is. It's control, 
Oh, control left bracket. That's what it is, right? So you, if you don't want to reach up to escape and you don't want to remap anything, you can also use control L. But what escape and control L and all these keys do is leave insert mode back to normal mode. So let's go here. We'll type in uh, the missing characters. We type in I, then type in the characters. Then we'll press escape. And now we're back in normal mode and we can HJKL to move around. Um, so I'm going to put in all this stuff here just for completeness sake. So now you've learned how to insert text. Um, so another way to insert, so 1.5 is appending. So insert mode, now you don't often want to have to move over exactly uh, where you want to insert stuff and then press I and you know it's a little anal to have to move around so Vim has a lot of shortcuts for moving for key, moving to key locations and going into insert mode so if I'm in normal mode and I go to this line um, it says that you can press capital A and this will do two things it'll put you at the very end of the line uh, the line and put you in insert mode so I can press capital A and I can type in what's missing from this line. Same thing here. And notice I press escape once I was done with that. So I'm going to go here, uh, capital A, missing uh, here, and then escape when I'm done. So I is insert mode and capital A is a pin to the end of a line. Now they don't tell you this, but there are really, I think, four main ways to enter uh, insert mode and all of them sort of make sense together now there's using I and using a now notice this I'm gonna go to F right now let's go to R right here now if I type in I I'm in insert mode and I can type in some characters and notice all of these characters get added before R um, so I'm gonna undo those with U. we'll talk about that later but so notice again if I am on a character press I it's gonna insert stuff before that character so one of the problems with that that you might be confused with if you're a beginning Vim user is if you're at the, the end of a line and you press I, it's actually going to insert text before that period or before the last character. Now there are really four characters, as I said, in Vim that put you in insert mode. There's lowercase i, there's lowercase a, there's capital I and capital A. So lowercase i puts you so that you can write stuff before the character you're over. Capital or lowercase a, which VimTutor doesn't mention, puts you in insert mode so you can type stuff after that character you're over. So again, if I'm over R and I press A, now I'm typing after that R. Um, now A, capital A, is a more extreme variant of lowercase a because it, instead of going to the right of the character you're over, it goes to the very far rightest edge of that line and lets you insert. Uh, on the other hand, you can use capital I, and if you type in capital I, it goes to the beginning of a line and puts you in insert mode. So that's um, so those are the four different ways I think that Vim uh, has of actually insert it, going into insert mode. And you should really be able to use them pretty flexibly. Um, uh, most of the time in actual real world text editing, you're using capital A or capital I or a change command, which we'll talk about later. Um, I don't actually use uh, lowercase I or lowercase A that often, but if you're a beginning Vim user, you'll probably be using them a good bit. Anyway, so that's appending, that's inserting text and stuff like that. Now, editing a file. So um, I talked about earlier, or VimTutor talked about, uh, Q for quitting. Again, so we'll uh, press Q and it'll actually say, oh, you didn't write, you didn't save your changes. Uh, you have to press exclamation point if you want to leave. So Q exclamation point will leave a uh, Vim. I'm going to get rid of that though. Now, if you want to save your changes and quit at the same time, you can type in uh, Q, uh, colon and then W then Q. Now W stands for write and Q stands for quit. Now you can also just type in W alone and that is save. So colon W um, that is save. Um, so colon WQ is save and quit. And I'll, I'll say in addition to this, um, in addition to colon WQ, you can just type colon X. That just means save and quit if you don't want to deal with that. Now I mentioned before that my preferred way of exiting Vim is actually capital Z, capital Q. 
um, and that will quit without saving any kind of changes. Now, if you want to save your changes and quit extra quick, instead of capital Z, capital Q, you can just type capital Z, capital Z. Very easy. That just leaves automatically. It saves your changes and leaves. Um, so that's basically all you need to know about that. So again, that's saving editing files. You know now. You now know how to save. Um, and I think I'm gonna stop my video for the time being. I'll probably uh, have a part two to this just because we've been going on for a little bit. So we've done pretty much all of lesson one. Uh, so you can see that we are now at lesson one summary. Uh, play around with these commands before uh, or again. Um, again, just to remind you, the stuff that we talked about aside from VimTutor is in addition to lowercase i and capital A, there's also capital I and lowercase a, which go into insert modes. Uh, in, and, um, you know, to exit Vim, you, of course, have capital Z, capital Z, and capital Z, capital Q, which I use a lot. And, of course, control U, control D to go up and down, and M, uh, L, H to move to the high, middle, low, wherever you want to be, uh, and ZZ, which, you know, sort of centers you on the line you're on. So anyway, I'm a little tired of talking. I'm going to get some water and probably do part two. Uh, so I'll see you guys next time.